learning outcomes after studying this module you shall be able to know the importance of dividends learn the various dividend models identify the relevance or irrelevance of dividends analyze the effect of dividends on the share prices introduction a firm has to take decision about its profits after tax it can either distribute these profits to the shareholders in the form of cash or it can plug it back into the business to generate more returns in future the firm that requires funds for growth and expansion follows the second option depending upon the needs of the firm the firm decides its dividend policy the dividend policy will eventually decide as to what should be the payout ratio and what should be the retention ratio the dividend policy becomes all the more relevant because of the relationship that exists between the dividend policy and the shareholder returns if the firm pays dividends the shareholder gets a return in the form of cash whereas if the firm decides to plug back its profits the returns are in the form of capital gains the decision of a firm should definitely be taken after keeping in mind the investor's expectation importance of dividend policy there are broadly two approaches to dividend policy the first policy states that dividends are relevant and the prices of shares depends upon the dividends declared by the firm as this maximizes the shareholder wealth some models like walter and gordon support this theory an alternate theory is that dividends are irrelevant and it does not affect the price of the share the overall value of a firm remains same irrespective of the dividends declared or not modinglani and miller model suggest and believes that dividends are irrelevant some models suggest that dividends are relevant in determination of the wealth of the shareholder whereas others believe that dividends are irrelevant in increasing the wealth of the shareholders let us discuss each of these models dividend models some model have been suggested regarding the dividend policy and they are as under first traditional model also known as graham dodd model second walter model third gordon model fourth miller and mondingalani model fifth linter model sixth rational expectation model first traditional model the traditional approach to the dividend policy which was given by graham and dl dot this model lays a clear emphasis on the relationship between the dividends and the stock market according to this approach the stock value responds positively to higher dividends and negatively when there are low dividends thus as per this model dividend policy is relevant in maximizing shareholders wealth the following expression given by traditional approach establishes the relationship between market price and dividends using a multiplier p is equal to m bracket d plus e divided by 3 bracket close where p is market price m is multiplier d stands for dividend per share and e earning per share there are however certain limitations of this model a the traditional approach states that the pe ratios are directly related to the dividend payout ratios that is a high dividend payout ratio will increase the pe ratio and thereby increase the wealth of the shareholders and on the contrary a low dividend payout ratio will increase the pe ratio and therefore will decrease the wealth of the shareholders however if a firm has increasing earnings a low dividend payout ratio may also increase the pe ratio and similarly a firm 
with high dividend payout ratio may have low PE ratio if its earnings are decreasing. B. Secondly, this model does not cater to the investor's preference and expectations. There could be investors who would want to have more returns in the form of dividends rather than a future hope of growth in share prices. Whereas, others may prefer low taxed or exempted capital gains rather than having dividends which are taxed indirectly in the hands of shareholders by the imposition of corporate dividend tax or dividend distribution tax. Walter model Just like the traditional model, the model given by James E. Walter also believes that the dividends are relevant in determining the price of the share. He studied the relationship between internal return generated by the firm and the cost of capital to give a dividend policy that would maximize a shareholder's wealth. He gave a very simple logic to determine the dividend policy. As per him, if the return generated by the firm is more than the return gen expected by the shareholder, it is better to keep the profit of a firm in the hands of the firm only. And if the returns generated by the firm are less than what the investors expected, then it is better to give the investors money to the investor only, as he can do better justice with that money. Therefore, when the return generated by the firm is more the profits should be retained and dividend policy should be strict, whereas if return generated by the firm is less the payout ratio should be more and dividend policy should be liberal. Assumptions of Walter model First, retained earnings are the only source of finance available to the firm with no outside debt or additional equity used. Second, R and K are assumed to be constant and thus Additional investments made by the firm will not change its risk and return profiles. Third, the life of the firm is infinite and it is assumed to continue forever. Fourth, if the value of the firm is constant, the dividend per share and the earning per share remain constant. Thus, the model studied the relevance of the dividend policy under three situations. First, when the returns of a firm is more than the return expected by the investor, that is R is greater than KE. Here, R is the rate of return of the firm and KE is the equity capitalization rate, the rate that the equity shareholders are expecting. Second. When the returns generated by the firm are exactly equal to the investor's capitalization rate, that is R is equal to KE. Third, when the returns generated by the firm is less than the equity's expectation rate, that is R is less than KE. The following formula is used to calculate the price of the share. P is equal to D plus E minus D brackets R divided by KE bracket close whole divided by KE where P stands for market price of the share, D dividend per share, E earnings per share, R internal rate of return of the firm and KE cost of capital of the equity or the equity capitalization rate. Practical illustrations. First illustration, a company has earnings per share of rupees 10, the equities capitalization rate being 12%, show the impact on the market price of the share under various dividend policies assuming the rate of return generated by the firm is 15%. Let the dividend policy be first 0% payout, second 100% payout. Solution. Let us see the formula. P is equal to D divided by KE plus R brackets E minus D 
divided by k e and hold divided by k e where p stands for market price of share d dividend per share e earnings per share r internal rate of return of the capital k e cost of capital of the equity or the dividend capital or the equity capitalization rate first when payout ratio is 0% we use the formula put on all the values and we get the answer rupees 104.16 when payout is 100% we use the formula and put on the values and we get the answer rupees 83.33 we can see that the price of a share is maximum when the payout ratio is 0% and the price is minimum when the payout ratio is 100% this shows the relevance of dividend policy now let's see illustration 2 valuation based on dividend the following information is available for x y z company number of shares outstanding is 1 lakh eps is rupees 4 dps is rupees 2.4 equity capitalization rate is 12% rate of return on investment is 15% first As per Walter's model, what will be the market value per share? Second, to keep share price at rupees forty, what should be payout ratio? Third, as per Walter model, what is optimum payout ratio? Fourth, market price at the payout ratio. Solution: According to Walter's model, P is equal to D plus E minus D bracket R over K E. bracket close and whole divided by k e where p is market price of share d is dividend per share e is earning per share r is internal rate of return of the firm k e is cost of capital of the equity or the equity capitalization rate all the values are put on in the formula and we get the answer as rupees 36.67 second let payout be x then put on the values in the formula and answer for x is 0.2 so the required payout ratio is 20% third according to walter's model when return on investment is more then the cost of equity price of share increases as dividend payout ratio decreases hence Optimum payout ratio in the present case should be nil. Fourth, at nil payout ratio, P is equal to R into 0.15 divided by 0.12 bracket close whole divided by 0.12. We get the value of rupees 41.66. Illustration three. Following are the details regarding three companies. X limited, Y limited, and Z limited. R is equal to twenty percent, fifteen percent, ten percent respectively. KE fifteen percent, fifteen percent, fifteen percent respectively. E rupees four, rupees four, rupees four. Calculate the share price at the payout ratio of fifty percent and seventy-five percent. Now let's see the solution. First, we use the formula that is P zero is equal to D plus E minus D bracket close R over K E whole divided by K E where P stands for market price per share, D dividend per share, E earning per share, R internal rate of return of the firm, K E cost of capital of the equity or the equity capitalization rate. Now you can look on the screen for the X. Y and Z. First of all, the values are find out for 50% and then for 75%. For X Limited, when we put on the corresponding value at 50%, we get the answer rupees 31.11. At 75%, we get the answer 28.89. For Y Limited, at 50%, when we put on the values, we get the answer rupees 26.67. and at 75% when we put on the values in the formula we get the answer of rupees 26.67
For Z limited at 50% when we put on the values we get rupees 22.22 as the answer and at 75% when we put on the values we get our answer to rupees 24.44. It can be observed from above that in case of X limited where R is greater than KE increase in payout ratio decreases the price of share. Company wise share price is same irrespective of payout ratio because R is equal to KE. An increase in payout ratio increases the share price of Z limited because R is less than KE. Now let's see one more illustration, illustration 4. The earning per share of a company is rupees 10 and the rate of capitalization applicable to it is 10%. The company has three options of paying dividend, first 50%, second 75% and third 100%. Calculate the market price of the share as per Walters model if it can earn a return of A 15%, B 10% and C 5% on its retained earnings. Solution. We use the formula P is equal to D plus bracket E minus C bracket close bracket R divided by KE bracket close and whole divided by KE where P is equal to price of share, R is equal to rate of earning, KE is equal to rate of capitalization or cost of equity. Now we prepare a table in which on the Vertical side we have put on the three options, the first is price of share if R is equal to 15%, next column price of share if R is 10% and next price of share if R is 5%. On the horizontal side we have created three column where we are showing DP ratio 50%, next column DP ratio 75% and in the third column DP ratio 100%. We calculate all the values at the price R when there is 15% and DP ratio is 50% we get rupees 125 at DP ratio 75 we got the price rupees 1125 and at DP ratio 100% we get a price of rupees 100. When the R is 10% we get a share of price at 50% payout ratio rupees 100 at 100 75% payout ratio it is rupees 100 and at even 100% payout ratio it is rupees 100. When R is 5% at 50% payout ratio share price is rupees 75, at 75% payout it is 87.5 and at 100% payout ratio share price is rupees 100. One can see it on the screen. Limitations of Walter model. Most of the limitations of this model arise due to the assumptions made. The first assumptions of exclusive financing by retained earnings makes the model suitable only for all equity firms. This model also assumes that the return on investment is constant. This will not be true for a growing firm which makes constant investments. Most importantly, the model assumes the business risk to be constant which may not be true. Gordon model. Myron Gordon used the dividend capitalization approach to study the effect of firm's dividend policy on the stock prices. Assumptions. The following are the assumptions on which Gordon based the dividend policy model for the firms. First. The firm will be an all equity firm with the new investment proposals being financed solely by the retained earnings. Second, return on investment R and the cost of equity capital KE remain constant. Third, firm has an infinite life. Fourth, the retention ratio remains constant and hence the growth rate also is constant G is equal to BR. Fifth, KE is more than BR that is cost of equity capital is greater than the growth rate. 
The model also assumes that the investors are rational and risk averse. They prefer certain returns to uncertain returns and thus put a premium to the certain returns and discount the uncertain returns. Thus, investors would prefer current dividends and avoid risk. Retained earnings involves risk and so the investors discounts the future dividends. They would like to pay a higher price for the stocks which earn them current dividend income and would discount those stocks which either postpone or reduce the current income. Gordon's dividend capitalization model gives the value of stock as P is equal to E bracket 1 minus B bracket close whole divided by KE minus BR bracket close where P stands for share price, E stands for earning per share, B retention ratio, 1 minus P dividend payout ratio, KE cost of equity capital BR growth rate G. Practical illustrations, illustration 5. The following information is given for QB limited, earning per share rupees 12, dividend per share rupees 3, cost of capital 18%, Internal rate of return on investment 22%, retention ratio 40%. Calculate the market price per share using Gordon formula. Solution Gordon formula P0 is equal to E bracket 1 minus B bracket close whole divided by K minus BR, where P0 is present value of market price per share E earnings per share K cost of capital B retention ratio in percentage R internal rate of return B R growth rate. On putting the corresponding value in the formula we get a price of rupees 78.26 limitations. Once again the assumptions of a model becomes its major limitations. A firm is not always an all equity firm. The return on investment and the retention ratio does not remain constant. The cost of equity may not be greater than G, the growth rate also given by BR. Miller and Modiglini model. Miller and Modiglani have propounded the MM hypothesis to explain the irrelevance of a firm's dividend policy. This method clearly proves that dividend policy does not impact the price of the share. As per the model, it is the investment policy of a firm which affects the share prices and not the dividend policy. Assumption However, MM model is based on certain assumptions which are not very realistic. These assumptions are A. The markets are perfect in which all investors are rational. B. There are no taxes. C. The risk and return of a firm does not change, it keeps the same investment policy. D. The investors are able to forecast the earnings, dividends and share price of the company with certainty. The firm has two choices as regards the profits it will earn. It can either give the profits as dividends or it can retain. If the firm retains the profit, the share price will increase and the firm will not require external financing to make its investments. If the firm will pay dividends, the share price will be less and the firm will need external financing and it will have to issue more number of shares to raise the investments and the price of a share will also be comparatively low. In both the situations, the overall value of a firm will remain same. It is given by using the formula P is equal to P1 plus P1 divided by 1 plus K. Practical illustration, illustration 6. ABC Limited has 10 lakhs equity shares outstanding at the beginning of the year. 
the current market price of rupees 150 and the directors have recommended a dividend of rupees 8 per share. The shareholders expect a return of 12 percent. First, applying MM model calculate the fair price of the share when A. Dividend is declared and B. Dividend is not declared. Second, if the investment budget is rupees 500 lakhs and anticipated profit is rupees 180 lakhs, compute how many shares are to be raised if A. Dividend is declared and B. Dividend is not declared. Solution. First, A part. Calculation of share price when dividend is declared. We use the MM formula, put on the values and we get P1 is equal to 160. B. Calculation of share price when dividend is not declared. Once again, we use the MM hypothesis formula, we put on the values and we get P1 is equal to 168. Second, external funds required rupees 500 minus 80, it's 320 lakhs. A. If dividend is declared, number of shares to be issued. 320 lakhs divided by 160, we get 2 lakhs. So, we have to issue 2 lakh shares. And if dividend is not declared, number of shares to be issued, 320 lakhs divided by 168. In this case, we have to issue 190,476 shares. Limitations of MM model. Once again, the assumption of a model becomes its limitation. Ignoring transaction cost and taxes is the major drawback of this model. Markets are also not perfect and to raise funds from the market, the firm will not be able to raise the money at prevailing market prices of share. Linter model. This model suggests that dividends should be stable and use an adjustment factor C which gives some weightage to current expected dividend and 1 minus C weightage to the last year's dividends. This model is given by the following mathematical formula. D1 is equal to D0 1 minus C plus bracket EPS into targeted payout ratio bracket close into C. Rational expectation model. As per this model, it assumes that there is no movement on the price of shares as long as the dividend declared by the company are as per the expectations of the investor. If the dividends declared by the company are not in line with the expectation of the investor, the price will show some adjustment. It will show an upward movement if the dividend declared are higher than expectation and downward movement if they are lower than expected. Summary. A firm has to take decision about its profit after tax. It can either distribute these profits to the shareholders in the form of cash or it can plug it back into the business to generate more returns in future. Third, the firm that requires funds for growth and expansion follows the second option. Depending upon the needs of the firm, the firm decides its dividend policy. There are broadly two approaches to dividend policy. The first policy states that dividends are relevant and the price of shares depends upon the dividends declared by the firm as this maximizes the shareholders wealth. Some models like Walter and Gordon support this theory. An alternate theory is that dividends are irrelevant and it does not affect the price of the share. The overall value of the firm remains same irrespective of the dividends declared or not. Some models have been suggested regarding dividend policy and they are as under a traditional model known as Graham dot model according to which P is equal to M 
bracket z plus e divided by 3 bracket close. Walter model p is equal to d plus e minus t brackets r divided by ke bracket close and whole divided by ke. C Gordon model p is equal to e bracket 1 minus p bracket close whole divided by ke minus p r d Miller and Modigliani model p is equal to p1 plus d1 divided by 1 plus ke e Linter model d1 is equal to d0 1 minus c plus bracket eps into target payout ratio bracket close into c f rational expectation model it assumes that there is no movement on the price of shares as long as the dividends declared by the company are as per the expectation of the investors.